All right, in our next example, we're going to take a look at what the keyboard can do. Up until this point, we've been looking at mouse examples, what happens when a mouse is clicked, when it's double clicked, where on the screen did that mouse click happen. What about the keyboard? The keyboard's important too, right? Let's look at this example where we are presented with a text box, and if we click in that text box and press a key, it gives us a message and it says, you just entered the character A, because I pressed the A key. All right, let me click OK. What if I hit B? It recognizes what keyboard keystroke I just uh, executed, and it returns the value of that particular key. Same thing, C. So I can go to any of the even numbers, four, seven. So it recognizes what key on the keyboard I strike as I strike it, and then it tells me what I just did. So let's see how this is happening in the code. All right, here you can see we are calling this program a keystroke detector. We instruct the user to click in the text box and press any key. And then we set up our function using check key and key code built-in functions. All right, so we say, first, different, different browsers react differently to uh, keyboard commands and, and mouse commands. So the first thing we do here is set up an if statement that says, and we try to identify what browser the user is, is using at that particular time. So if the user is using Microsoft Internet Explorer, if the navigator application name is Microsoft Internet Explorer, then it's going to react a little bit differently than if it's using anything else, um, a non-Microsoft browser like Firefox or Safari or Google, Google Chrome. All right, so in the else statement, we identify the strings. And we identify the string length, in other words, it's going to be 1. And it will identify the value of that string. In other words, the string is going to be whatever character we hit on the keyboard. Then it is going to run the alert and display the message, you entered the character. And then it is going to pull that string from our character code built-in library functions. And then show us that particular string. All right, so that's how it identifies what the keystroke was. And on the key down event, on key down, it runs the check key function and then returns the event, in other words, the key that was pressed. All right, let's see this in action one more time. Let me load this so we can start with a blank screen. All right, if I click in the text box and hit a key, it says we just hit H. What happens if I hit the letter I? It recognizes it. What happens if I hit the number zero? It recognizes it. Number two, and so on. So you can see how as you, as you strike the keys, it's running through that function, identifying where on the keyboard that key is and what value it should return. All right, now let's go to our last example. And in this example, we have a command button. And what's going to happen when I click this command button is uh, a phenomenon that JavaScript people call bubbling. And what event bubbling is, is when you perform an event, it will trigger something. And then if you perform that next event, it'll trigger something else. And all of these things will be done in succession. In other words, it will if there are multiple events that are happening on a page, it will bubble up and go through all of them until it gets to the end of what you've programmed. So let's see this happen first, and then we'll take a look at how it's, how it's done.